Thank you for joining me. This is your May 2017 astrology forecast with me, Anushka. So the big news is we have a Saturn trine Uranus this month and it's really great energy. This is breakthrough energy. This is a positive, positive change, um, positive, <clears throat> sorry, positive, um, where are we? Positive social reform. This is this is managing to merge the old with the new and 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 taking what works and also incorporating into it positive like new ideas and innovation as well as that we have the north node going into leo which is lovely because it's been in virgo and we i think we've all been doing a lot of critical self work and you know looking at ourselves and really being honest with ourselves and who we are. Now it moves into a far more fun place of self-expression and of living from the heart. For you, it's a really lovely place in your 11th house, but I'll get onto that later. So first of all, on the third, Mercury goes direct in your seventh house. So it's it's fine now to sign any documents and to, to take that job, to buy that car, you can trust your, the communications that come to you, you can trust your thinking a bit better, um, everything starts to move on as normal and hopefully you've had some time, you know, if you've been thinking about relationships, um, if you've been thinking about in, uh, partnerships, you've had some time to review how that how they've worked for you, how they've gone for you and, um, and now you can move forward with a bit of a clearer picture and an idea of um, of what you want in partnership, be that business partnership or romantic partnership. So that's on the third. And then on the 10th, we have, that is when the North Node moves into Leo. So for you, this is in the, third, in, in the 11th house. And with the North Node, basically the North Node is, it represents our, I like to look at it in terms of, you know, it represents where we should be heading. And the, you will have a point in your birth chart where, which has your north node in it and your south node is always directly opposite your north node. And that is the area of life that it is said we are, we, if we want to fulfill our, our karma and our, our, our dharma rather, and our soul's mission, then that is what we are to head towards. But this also changes as well as we, as we move through the years. And so now the North Node is in Leo. So you can incorporate the two, you see, and, and put them together. But for you now, the North Node is in Leo. So this is about you. I feel like there's been so much energy and still is quite a bit of energy on your relationships. And, you know, the, the third house, the seventh house, they are lit up and now this puts the 11th house into focus and it actually creates a grand fire trine between Saturn, Uranus and this North Node. And the nice thing is this North Node is saying to you, you know, what do you enjoy doing? What brings you joy? What do you love to do? Connect to your heart again and put it out there. Connect with people, start having fun again. Start, start getting out there and just just let it, letting people meet you on a, on a heart level, you know? Um, I know you Libras are very kind of, your people, you're, you tend to be people people, <laughs> if that makes sense. And you tend to be very charming and you tend to like um, socializing. So, you know, this Leo, this Leo North Node should really be no issue at all. Um, in the 11th house, it's about meeting up with different groups and organizations and, and networking and getting yourself out there. But, but also bringing, bringing to groups a sense of your own self-expression and who you are and really coming from your heart. So it's really lovely energy, especially after that Virgo energy, which was quite detail orientated, where we were really looking at ourselves quite in quite a very real way. Now it's about having fun again, connecting to that inner child, doing the things that we love. Also on the 10th, we have a full moon in Scorpio. In your second house, in your second house of resources. Now in Scorpio, this can be quite intense. It can be a bit of a passionate full moon. We might, we might be feeling our desires and our desire nature a little bit more. Um, there could be a tendency for for um, resources to be poured into having too much of a good time. So escapism, alcohol, drugs, whatever, you know, Scorpio does rule those things. So 
<clears throat> just watch out for that. It's nice to have a nice time, but obviously you don't want things to get out of hand. Um, but that's that full moon on the second. It, can, it also has very nice healing qualities to it because Scorpio is a very healing planet. Um, so it depends. It's also up to you how you want to work with it. But like I said, if you, if you do go out that night, try not to get carried away. <laughs> and then on the 11th, we have um, Mercury in your, where are we? Mercury in your seventh house. And that's trining Saturn in that third house of yours. So if you've been looking at partnership, um, first of all, let's talk about romantic partnership. So if you've been looking at partnership, because there's a lot of the Uranus is here and there's a spotlight being put on this house. So if you're looking at partnership, this could be a day where you and your significant other are able to have a conversation that is really gets to the heart of things and that really helps to um, give you both some clarity in terms of, of what you expect from one another and, and how you can better work together. Um, you, might, you might find some really interesting insights and in, you know if you communicate with, it, with one another because I, it looks like you'll be coming from a place of, of truth you know and you'll be able to see things very clearly on this day. That's quite supported. Um, and that's on the 11th. On the 16th we have Mercury then going into your 8th house. So it's going from that 7th house of partnership. Oh sorry, I did say I would talk about, you know, if it wasn't romantic. This could also be to do with business partnerships, you know. So if you're thinking about going into business partnership with somebody, um, then this, is, this would be a great day for communicating, brainstorming, organising. You know, this is having your business head on. You'll be able to see all the facts, figures very clearly. You'll be able to put plans. You can, you can make actionable plans that are very based in reality and um, this is really good kind of leadership um, energy and organizational energy okay so then as I was saying on the 16th Mercury goes into your eighth house comes out the seventh house of partnership and goes into your eighth house of shared resources inheritances tax death and rebirth intimacy psychology, what lies beneath, investigation, um, taboo, the occult, all of that kind of good stuff. <laughs> so that's, and that joins your sun, because the sun's currently in your eighth house as well. So sun's shining a spotlight on this part of your life. So I feel like we're not really dealing so much with, I mean, it could be to do with shared resources, but I feel like you're thinking, because you've been doing a lot of work in terms of relationships, now you might be going a little bit deeper and looking into okay, well, why why do I end up in these relationship dynamics or why did I um, go after this, the kinds of people I do? Or if there's nothing wrong in your relationship, then fine. Maybe you'll be looking into other parts of yourself, but certainly a light is being shone on um, deep matters, matters to do with intimacy, matters to do with um, anything you might have inherited from the family, be it even a bad habit, um, smoking, drinking, anything like that matters of of shared resources you might start looking at and start looking into them um, with with kind of the ability to really see into them and into the details of things and and to investigate to a certain extent so there's a light being shone there um, on the how's that that's on the 16th on the 19th we have Saturn in Sagittarius trining Uranus in Aries so what does this mean so this is positive change this is transition this is being able to incorporate into our lives things that work better for us in whatever area this is so i feel for you this is in the area of relationship of one-to-one -one partnerships so even if you're single you might start looking at basically where the choices you've made in the past or or you know how the past, how the people you've been attracted to in the past have been a reflection of maybe certain beliefs you held about yourself, and maybe you know you realise now that they weren't very productive. You want to shift that. This is really great energy for for changing that. You know this is breakthrough energy. If you want to start attracting a different type of partner, then it could be related to how you think about yourself. You know Saturn and Sagittarius in your third house. And that's the, the house of communication and information and thinking and speaking. And so it could be that you start to realise that how you think about yourself very much affects what you feel you're worthy in partnership. 
So if there's anything to be changed here, then you have the ability to do that. You know, if it's not romantic, you might be looking at, I mean, this could be breakthroughs in terms of um, business, you know, if you if you work in business with another person, you could have some amazing breakthroughs, you could, you could find a new way of doing things that no one else has thought of, um, that is quite innovative. And so this is interesting energy. Uranus is surprise, it's innovative, it's breakthrough kind of energy, but it's being, you know, with this trine with, with um, Saturn, you know, Saturn stabilizes it and gives it that kind of earth energy to, to, to ground whatever change needs to be made, whether it's in partnership or whether it's in business, that kind of thing. If there have been difficulties in your relationship, if you're in a relationship, this could be the point where you start healing and your partner starts healing and you're able to move forward to the next the next chapter. If it's clear that the two of you, you know, you can no longer continue together, it might be that the healing for you is in moving on and moving elsewhere. But there's certainly change coming about for all of us. And um, if you have any planets in the fire signs, they will be affected by the Saturn trine Uranus. So in Sagittarius, Aries or Leo, you, those planets will be affected. So keep an eye out for that. Like I said, there's a grand tr fire trine, <laughs> there's a grand fire trine going on between the North Node, between um, Saturn and between Uranus. So these are, this is your seventh house, your 11th and your third. So this is communication, this is information and, and, and kind of short distance travel. This is partnership and this is groups and associations that you belong to, as well as your, your wishes, you know, and, and, and kind of goals. Um, so really interesting energy there, Libra. Um, right, and then, when was that? That was the 19th. Then on the 20th, the sun goes into the ninth house. So where you've been maybe looking into things related to, um, you know, your psychology and your inner workings and, and maybe looking into shared resources, that kind of thing. Now your mind go. now the spotlight is on growth and expansion and travel and adventure and that kind of, and all of the, the good stuff, all of the fun stuff, growth. And you might be wanting to, you might be communicating with people about, um, you know, taking courses or maybe wanting to travel with somebody because um, it is in Gemini. So you might be looking for a travel buddy to link up with so you can go and venture somewhere. Um, there's also a new moon happening as well. Five days later, um, this new moon is in Gemini. And so once again, this is opportunity to go somewhere new, learn something new. And part and most likely you might want to do it with someone else or you, you will end up having a really lovely time and meeting a lot of people, being very sociable, very active um, whilst you're traveling about, whilst you're learning, whatever, you know, however it is that this plays out. On the 31st then, we have um, Mercury in that eighth house, trining Pluto in your fourth house. So, I mean, there's a number of ways that this can play out, but you know, I think of this as if you're talking about, if you are somebody who has been doing a lot of deep inner work and kind of going within and trying to kind of cleanse yourself of any baggage, then this is a really kind of, this can be quite a powerful um, realization that happens on this day that helps you to move forward. I tend to see um, this as speaking to metaphysics because obviously Pluto rules the eighth house, rules Scorpio which rules the eighth house. So Mercury trining Pluto, you know, you could have incredible insights into um, maybe the family dynamics of your past and why they led to where you are now. Um, you could just be having one of those days where you're able to almost read the thoughts of everybody around you. Um, if there's anything you want to look into, like astrology or metaphysics or the occult, anything related to that, that you know, you'll probably feel more drawn to that on this day and have a great propensity for learning about it. So that's on the 31st Libra. Um, all in all, I'm really looking forward to this month and I hope you are too. I think it's a great month and I think it's it's fantastic. Um, you're still doing a bit of work, but you are being asked to start enjoying yourself more. Get out there. Um, Jupiter is in your sign, which is, you know, also lovely. So, you know, it's about now it's going to, you're going to start feeling a little bit lighter and you're going to be wanting to explore and to to meet people again and to just get out and about and take in information 
and you know I just I really like the energy of this month for all of us thank you so much for watching I will see you next month if you'd like to catch up in the meantime I'll be doing a new moon video and a full moon video for this month of May take care Libra bye bye